Um, so in terms of what you can eat, um, there's a long list. So essentially, we, we want to be eating more plant foods that are high in fiber. Um, meat, animal products don't have any fiber in them, so that you can only get fiber from plant foods. And some plant foods have much more fiber than others. And some of those are um, particularly good at encouraging acromantia. This is um, based on animal studies rather than human studies, um, but the, there are good reasons to think it would work for humans as well. And um, there's a type of, of uh, fiber called FOS or fructo oligosaccharides. And that particularly encourages acromantia. Um, even when the diet is not particularly healthy otherwise. Um, and sources of FOS include um, bananas, artichokes, I, should, I have to let you write these down, onion, chicory, garlic, asparagus, and actually lots of other vegetables. Um, another one that seems to be important is rhubarb. Um, also, um, fish oil helps to increase acromantia, um, but uh, alcohol and saturated fat decrease the levels of acromantia. Um, and things that contain polyphenols, um, so that's cloves, cocoa, berries, beans, nuts, vegetables, tea, and you'll be happy to hear red wine. And you said uh, yeah red wine is good there's clearly a contradiction there um, alcohol but no red wine i mean compounds in red wine that are good and obviously the alcoholic part of red wine is bad so ideally you'd have grape juice <laughs> what kind of foods are included in in plant-based foods because often people just think about fruits and vegetables and we're also talking about um grains and i know lots of people don't like grains because they like to follow the paleo diet um, but as long as you can tolerate grains, I, I don't believe that they are harmful for us. I don't believe that humans aren't meant to eat grains. I think it's part of our heritage, um, especially for um, Europeans. And um, we, our bodies have adapted to eating greens and we, uh, sorry, grains, and we have benefited from them. anybody would like um, some tips on how to increase their plant food intake, their fiber intake, um, I would say to think about the base carbohydrate of your meals. Um, I think a lot of people eat bread, potatoes, rice and pasta and they don't go much beyond that and there are so many other things you could eat. Um, oats and uh, couscous, quinoa, Bulgar wheat, you know, a huge numbers of grains that you could add to your diet. I'd also say um, uh, adding nuts and seeds is a really easy way to increase the amount of fiber in your diet. And I think a lot of people are worried about nuts and seeds because they have a high fat content. But I think the benefits of nuts and seeds um, in their oils and in their fiber content outweigh that fat content. They don't seem to be associated with weight gain. Okay. I said in my book, and I stand by it, that um, having birch and muesli for breakfast is an amazing thing to do because you get oats, you get yogurt, you get milk, you get uh, as many nuts and seeds as you want to add, and you can add um, fruit. Berries are particularly good for fiber um, and particularly tasty. So. Uh, having birch and muesli, you can get your recommended daily allowance of fiber in one bowl. And then everything you el else you eat that day is a bonus. Um, oh yes, I was just going to say, if, if people have a low fiber diet at the moment and they want to increase, do so slowly because your gut microbes need to keep up, otherwise you'll be quite uncomfortable. This is becoming a complex area, as you can imagine. Um, probiotics have traditionally been um, a small range of different species. 
and we just take a bunch of them and hope that it does something. And we are increasingly aware of the very specific roles that different strains of bacteria have um, and the illnesses that they are associated with. So in answering that question, it, it depends is the answer. It depends on what your aim is. So if you have a, a particular problem, your best bet is to try and discover what the most appropriate probiotic is for that problem. If you want to generally improve your health, then taking a mixture like NAMI um, or any, any probiotic with lots of species in it um, will do that job for you. And I would say, I mean, personally, I take probiotics every day um, and I have some health problems and I just am convinced enough that they're important that I'm happy to put them in my diet. So I'd say that if someone feels that they're healthy, then they needn't take them all the time, but then they might want to take them when they um, are taking antibiotics or if they're traveling abroad or uh, if they're feeling unwell, um, then that's a good time to take them short term. But, but the honest answer is there is so much to learn about how pro probiotics work and what the value of different ones is that you can do it how you like. Well, if, if I knew the answer to how to um, be thin with probiotics, then I would be very rich. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but I do think that combining all of these things, combining um, increasing your fibre intake with um, doing some exercise because it reduces inflammation, not because it uses up calories, and taking probiotics and eating probiotic foods, those things will contribute to weight loss. Wow, wonderful.